Greetings and welcome. Today we will be continuing our MS Word exercise. So this is going to be like part two of it. We already did the part one. Now, if you are not familiar with how to open MS Word, you can have to refer to the first one. But I was still going to show you this. So we are going to go to the start menu. You know, try to open Microsoft Word by tapping the new. You okay, click here to open MS Word. We are using the 2016 version. And we have to hit then blank sheet now let us maximize from here so last uh tutorial ms web part one we completed the file and home type so today we're going to be going to the insert type we have an outline so there's some things that we're going to be doing today now let's look at it from here so we're going to be looking at uh, the default cover page option how to format it with your own data and how to insert the blank page how to do page break, how we can convert text to table, how we can insert a format table, how we can insert and remove page or background in our document, how we can insert a format different shapes and group them, how we can work with smart eyes, how we can use chart, we have to something to do with links and map, headers and footer, number, page numbering, where I drop gap, combining different documents, and then equations and simple. So this is the thing we're going to be doing with today. So as we wait no more time, the hit right here. Now we're here. There's a blind document. And I hit the insert type. So insert here, you're going to see the first option I have to do a cover page. So let's click the drop down arrow. Now these are default cover pages. Okay. Whenever you want to use a default cover page, what you have to do? Just click on it. Just choose the design. So there are not more of them. So any of them that you want to use, just click on it. So let's, let's look at this one. Now if I click on it, the core page will be inserted. Now the default data that you now want. So what you have to do is just change it with your The file that is saying uh, document title, maybe that is signed. So here now you have to click. You can click in this text box. And just type the document title. Maybe this is an assignment. You can just click, maybe it's a subtitle, whatever title you want to write, you know, this thing that you want to include on the document. If you don't want any symbols, what you have to do, you click on it and then remove it from there. Mm -hmm. So just format it, you know, insert your own data. That's it. So you can go for insert, you can insert a text box also, whenever you want to write a particular text. So you can Draw our text box here and type text. This is this higher text that we want on our cover page. That's for the default. So that's how we can insert the default cover page and then format it on the So let's go back and look at the next option. So we're having uh, inserting a blank page. So what we're going to do here, we're going to have to hit new document. Let's use our formula to generate text. So equal right open parentheses, let's do 20. So close it and end. We have 20 paragraphs inserted, so we have like two pages. And don't forget your easy navigation to go to the beginning of the document because right now we're on page two. So you just use your control and the home key to go at the beginning of the document. So let's go by the insert. Now the page blank page option is used to insert a blank page between two pages that have document on have a text on it. So we have this page and we have this page. In case I want to insert a blank page between here, then I have to use the blank page option. I can click here at the end of this one, and I can click here. Now go back to the insert type. Then we're going to go here to blank page. So if I click here, what happens? There's a blank page that will be inserted between the first text and the other one. Okay? That's how we can use the blank page option. Another option there is the page break. Okay, so look at page break. Now, in case I want to keep one, two, three paragraphs on just this page, I can break away. So you have to click from where you want to break away and go to another page. So you have to click where you want to break away. And then let's go back to insert and look at page break. Where the cursor is blinking, there was going to break the page away. So if you click page break, it break away. So let's go back to this. 
Now we only have three paragraphs left on this page. The book away in the document is forwarded to another page. That is for page. Okay. So that's go at the end of the document. We try to work with that. I try to work with the uh, table. Now, firstly, we want to see how we can format text to table. So let's go back here. To this. Now, you have to write your text. If you want to convert a text to table, you have to just separate each column with a comma. So we won't have a column heading. Let me increase it. We won't have a column heading that will be saying number, first name, last name, and age. Now, the respective volume, they have to be separated by a comma. So the first value is going to be James Brown, age 30. That's going to be number one. We just write the text by separating with a comma. That's it. So here we have to do, after writing our values, we have to highlight the text and then go back to insert, left click back the table. Then you see the option saying convert to table, convert text to table. So let's click on it. Automatically we detect that there are four columns and there are six rows. What do you have to do? Click on OK. See what happens. The text are being converted to a table. Now here we have to just reduce the size of each column. So by holding it between here, just drag on the left side. That's how it should be. And then hold this one also. This paragraph. And hold this. And then reduce it on the left side. And then hold this. And then carry by this one. See what happens. Text have been converted to table. That's how easily we can just convert text to table. But remember you have to use command between them whatever space is required for the space also let me do with this one then use your command to separate the columns okay that was it for inserting converting text to table and then look at the available options and look at our table now how can we insert table by default if we hit the insert options we're going to see table there are active cells available here so we have to select how many columns and how many rows we want so let's try to select five columns and five rows. So five columns, then I'll go five rows. And then just click. You have five columns, five rows, table inserted. Now we can see it. Now, when we insert five rows and five columns, in case we want more rows, what we have to do is just hover between any of them here, yeah, like this. We're going to have a plus. Just click the plus. Now, if we check, we're having now one, two, three, four, five, six. We're having six rows. We're still having five columns. Whenever you want to increase the number of rows, just come at the top and just hit the plus. Or you can highlight, right click, right click, and say insert. And you can say insert column left, insert column right. Whenever you click that, column will also be inserted. You know? That's how we can do it. Now, if we check down, so we have one, two, three, four, five columns. In case we want more, there are two ways. Okay, click here and click the enter key on the keyboard. One will be added. You know? But in case we want more, like simultaneously or continuously, then we can use the type key. So we press type and the cursor reaches the last cell. And we click the type, it's going to give up one. We click the type, it's going to also give up one. Yeah. So here, let's try to do something. So this cell, I'm going to have a number. So here, we're going to get number one. We're going to get number two, number three, number four. We're going to get five, and we're going to get six, and we get seven. So we want to reach it up to ten. So we have to just use our type E. So we have eight. Use type E. Then press type. If we reach the last cell, we will drop one. And then let's do ten. So now we have 10. Okay, let's go back to the top. Let's go back to the top and then look here. So what we want to do is we want to make this cell small. So we have to come here, try to hold this in here, then we'll reduce it on the left side. So here we want to do, uh, we want to merge these two cells. So we want to merge here the three. Whenever you want to merge cells in Word, what do you have to do? Highlight it. So we have to highlight this too. 
actually highlight this bit. Okay, so you have to highlight the cells that we want to merge. So you want to merge this cell. Now highlight it. You have to come right click here, then go to merge cells. If you click merge cells, what happened? We join the cells together. Okay. So now one, two columns. We have a heading here where we can write whatever text we want. So that's it. Here, if you want to merge any cell, any number of cells, to highlight those cells. Then right click on it, you see the merge option. Click on merge, now see, we have merge. So we can merge cells, we can use the pen to also distribute or draw you know, different columns inside. So in case I want to split it into maybe two or three, so what I have to do here, go back to design and layout, I'll have a draw. So if I click draw table, I'll have pen. So here I can just click, see. Split it. I can also just click here from this point and get draw it here. See what happened? I split it. So there are a lot more things you can do with table. So depending on what you want to do with the table, then you have to just you know if there's need to merge, you have to just click and merge it up. Now let's look at another things that we can do with table. So we're having eraser option. You can click eraser, just try to erase. So if you click eraser. And click on each line so here this one will be that simple way also we can merge you know so just click on the line and it will be merged okay that's it. we can also format table with different design okay so now if you have the eraser click the escape key to get rid of the eraser you can also click here to highlight the whole table so we can apply design to the table by highlighting the table and go to design, clicking this option here, we can use different design. So in case I want this kind of design, I can click on it. Now see what happens. Design is being applied to the table. Okay. So that is it about table. So in case we want to now increase the weight of each lines that make up this table, you can also highlight the table here. You can go to border, you know. We can choose a tick border here, then we can go to borders option here, and we can do border all. See what happens. The weight of the line that make up the, the border of the table now, the weight increases. Now there was the design I would choose. So that is about table. Now in case I wrote I wrote a text in the merge cells, like like this. In case I want to change the duration of this text, so I want the text to go for a color. What I have to do here, just right click in the cell, then go to text direction. So here I can click text direction, and then here, this direction that I want, orientation, this. Click on it, click on OK. See what happens. The text now direction change. So we can click here also to increase the cell, cell width, so like this. We get it. So, so far, so good. That is for table. Now let's look at the next available option. So let's go below. Now here is picture. So we're going to insert the picture. I'm also going to remove the picture background. We're going to apply text wrap to it. So we have to hit the picture option. So let's select a picture from here. So let's carry this picture. Click this picture. Click on insert. The picture is inserted. Whenever you insert a picture in Microsoft Word, you try to move it around for the first time, the picture will not go. So what you have to do, wrap text the picture. And whenever you click on the picture or you click on the shift, there will be a contextual type appearing, which is the format type. So you have to click on the format type to be able to format this picture. Now if you click on the format type by default, the picture style options here. We can click and choose different options for the picture. You know, these are different styles that we can apply to the picture. Okay. But we don't want to apply style. What we want to do here is we want to test wrap the picture. So when we click on the format type, we're going to see a wrap text option. Now we can click on wrap text. Now the available option here. Clicking on the square, you're going to have the picture going square. 
We have a document between. We have true. We have tied. We have top and border. We have behind text. We know we want a picture to be behind the text. We got in front text. And we want a picture to come in front text. So we're going to use the square of the tied option. So click on the tied. Now see what happens. The picture can freely move. So before you move picture, if it's a logo that you carry in your document, you have to text wrap it. Okay. So now picture is being text wrap. In case now we want to increase the width and the length of this picture or decrease it. If you hold it from this angle, you're going to just be doing with the width. You're not going to be doing with the height. Also, if you hold it from here, you're just going to be doing reducing the height, not the width. In case you want to reduce both the width and the height, then we got to hold it from any of these angles. So here, 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 or here. Now we can hold it from here. You can reduce it. Both the width and the length will be reduced. Can hold it from here also, we can increase. So here we want to remove the background of this picture just to the left of the picture. Now this feature is not available for Microsoft Word 2010. Okay, so other versions of Microsoft Word, the feature is not available to remove the background. So we have to click on the picture, we have to click on format on the far left side. We have to see remove background. So we can click here. We're gonna have a little tools available here. By default, it will just highlight those parts, you know, automatically will detect the parts. Now, what we want to do here is, in case we want to keep a particular portion of this picture that is not being highlighted. So, what we have to do, check on the file left. This plus, we have to select the portions of the picture that we want to keep. Now, let's check here. We want to keep a particular portion here. Okay. So, let's try to zoom it. Then we can see what it is. So this part here we want to keep. Okay. So we have to do both for the plus. I have to click on the plus. We have pen on the the pointer. So just draw the pen here to keep this part. Huh. Now what? See what happened? There's a part that have come here that we now want. So this portion we now want. So we now want a portion. Let's go for the minus two. So if we click on the minus or the remove, and we just draw it here. See that? That part will be removed. Now you have, just have to carefully do it. You just have to carefully do it. So we have to go back for the plus. And then we have to keep this part. So let's draw it down here. Also this part. That's it. So carefully you have to draw over those parts that you want to keep using the plus. And then draw it over the part that you now want using the minus. Then after, click on save change. See what happens. The background of the picture is gone. Let me use it. Now, what else we want to do is we want to crop this picture. So when you click on the picture, click on the format type, you're going to see the crop option. So you can click on the crop and then just put the black point here and then drag it in. So wherever you want to stop it, you stop it then. Just click. Now, picture background is gone. Picture is cropped. So we can reduce it also like that. So we can reduce it and carry it to a particular position that we want. So that is all for picture. Now what else we can do is we have the picture and then we have two, three different pictures. So those pictures we want to group them. Now when you have object or picture that you want to make a multiple copy, then we go for the control D option. So if I do control D, I'm gonna have one copy. If I do control D like that, I'm gonna have multiple copies of the picture. Now here I can click and just reset the pictures. Okay. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna group the pages. We wanna group our objects. We wanna make them one. Okay. So now how can we select all of those pictures at one? They'll be able to group them. Now what we have to do is from the home type, there's a tools available that we left behind from the part one. So that was select objects. Okay. But then look at the default one. What we can do first, we can click on one of these objects, hold down our control key, point up on the change to the plus sign on it, we can click on the next one. You click on this one, you click on this one, click on this one, click on this one. 
And what happened? There's one of them left, left behind. To include everything, you have to go back for this layer object. So when we come here, we have to click here, click on the layer object. Now we have to just draw over those objects that we're going to select. The drawing over them, now see what happened. Everything is included now. We want to group them. We have to right click and see the group option. You click on group. What happened? All the pictures have been grouped into one. Okay. So one of them left behind. Just do it the same way. Click this one. Click the control. Then click on the other one. Let's go back to format. Let's go here. Let's go group. So they are all one. That's how we can group images or objects inside Microsoft Word. It could be a shapes also. Maybe you use different shapes to make a logo and you want to group them. So you have to use the group option here by selecting all the objects, going to the format type, going to the group option. So that was it for the picture. Let's go back to the insert type. And then look at shapes. So how we can insert shapes. So I go back to insert and then look at shapes. So we can click here. This op option here is for online pages. So we can click here and then search the page online. But we're not having internet connection, so we're not going with that. So let's look at shapes. So there are a lot of different shapes available that we can use to do different things. Okay. But times go by in our project in the MS Word, we're going to be using different type of shapes to produce logo, to make menu, to do different types. Okay. But Whenever you select a shape, so that go for the rectangle shape. When you select a shape, the pointer is going to change to a pause sound. What we have to do, start from a particular point where you want to draw, you know, where you want to draw your shapes. So, we have a rectangle shape here. So, inside this shape, we now want color. Whenever you now want color inside shapes, you have to click on the format type. Firstly, click on the shape. Click on the format type. Now you see options available here. So shape fill have to do with the color that inside the shapes. So in case you now want a color or you want to change the color, just click shape fill, select the color, color will be there. We now want color, say no fill. Then no fill. In case you want to insert picture inside the shapes, you can go back to shape fill, you can go to pictures, you can go to work of mine. You can select the picture and see what happens. Inside our shape, the pictures fit. That is not what we want. What we want to do is we want to remove the picture from the shapes by clicking here and saying no color. That's the color. And then we want to apply, change the outline. So the outline has to do with this line. We can change the line color. Maybe we want a red color. We click red. Maybe we want to increase the weight of this line. How thick the line is. We have to click on it again. Go back to format. Let's go to outline and go to width. Okay. Okay, increase the weight of the line. So what happened? Long weight increase. So we can hold it here. We can hold our shapes and then we can carry it around. Yeah. So that's how we can format shapes. We'll apply different color. So we can apply effect to the shapes also. But you only see the effect options applying. Or the effect will only show when you apply when you insert a color there. So let's say we insert the gradient. Okay, so we'll go for texture. So we insert the default texture. Now this shift we're gonna apply or effect to it. So we can go here, shapes effect. We can go for presets, there are different options available. You know, different ways you can make the shapes look and see what happens. The shape look different. Because we apply shapes effect to it, you know. There are different different options. We have blue, we have soft edges, we have the bold options. You see that? So we can apply effect to the shapes to make it look different. You know. So we have in 3D rotation, we can make the object to rotate us. And see what happens. We make the shapes to rotate as a 3D rotation. Now see. Whenever you insert the shapes and you want to apply text to it, just click on the shape and write the text. Just write the text. So whatever text you want to write, yeah, just write it there. 
now just click back this shape now we have to this text we have to change the color of the text so that is red we can go for bold we can increase the size also see you get it that's it man for our shapes so as time go by we're going to bring a tutorial where we have to do with uh, designing different things so we're going to use shapes and we're going to format it different way you know so whenever the shapes is required you just have to click on it and then just insert the shapes so that is it for shapes watch out for more uh, projects that are coming up we're going to be using different kind of shapes to do different things okay so we stayed on the insert types now let's go a little bit for the smart height now what are smart eyes smart eyes are eyes or the features in ms word that we can use to portray the ideas okay something that you want to say maybe when you write it in a text it's going to be difficult to understand but using smart eye easily you can just portray the ideas okay so whenever you want to use smart eyes in microsoft word go for the insert type over the smart eye options now here's the art category so there are a lot of them they are different style of smart eyes so depending what you want to do you have to find smart eye that will suit your ideas so if you want to do something that have to do a cycle maybe it start from a particular point and then you go all the way then you go for cycle but i want to do something that have to do with hierarchy okay in this hierarchy i want to choose this one so horizontal hierarchy i have to click on it Whenever you insert the smart eye where you see text, you can click there and just type the text or you can go for the text file. Okay. So you can click here. I want to do something with computer. So we want to use a smart eye to portray what is a computer comprises of. So computer comprises of hardware and software. So hardware. And then just click here, type software, comprised of the hardware and the software. Software. Now, hardware comprises of what? Uh, input devices and output devices. We do like that. Input devices and then output devices. Now, software also, there are three types of them, primarily we know. So we have system. We have system software. Now, I want another ships, two ships to be added on these ships to be able to complete the other type of software. Now, whenever you want to insert add ships to smart add, since I want to add the ships for this one, then I have to click here. Then just go to the design type and click on add shapes. When I click add shapes, the shapes is added. Now see what happens. I have to click here now and type application. Application software. Then I have to click here and type utility software. You see that? So the smart is just one that computers comprises of hardware and software, hardware comprises of the input and output devices, and then software comprises of three types, system software, application software, and utility software. See that? So instead of writing in the text, we can use the smart eye to just portray the idea. Now when we insert smart eyes, we can design the smart eyes, format it different way, change the color, click the smart eyes, come to the style, you can click the options available down here, and then see. These are different styles of smart eye that we can choose. These are different styles of smart eyes that we can choose from design. So from here, see, these are different designs that we can use. These are different designs. See that? Whenever you select a design, and then you want to change the color, so you can go here, change color, you can choose different color from here. You see that? And then you see that so you have to click on the smart eye before you can see the design type or the format type so here also in case we want to change this 
type of smart arts then we can go to we can click on smart arts then we can go to uh, smart eyes we can go to reset the graphic to go to erase the whole thing and go back to the number whenever you apply the format you number on it so that that's try to, to change it to another one so we can go here to the design and then we can go to this option we can click more layout so we want to change the layout okay you see the hierarchy in case we want to use another layout we can go for more layout so this same data can be represented in different in different one so let's try the list because we went for list and then we went for something like this now see what happened it changed so whenever you want to change your smart eye option just go to layout and then find different ones so here you can also insert picture so here in case we want to insert picture for computer you can just click here click on work offline so from my computer, let me find a picture that's showing computer. So from here, I'm gonna look for computer picture. So I'm just gonna put one image there to portray exactly what we're talking about. So here, click on it, click on insert. Now see how it is. So computer compares of hardware, hardware compares of input and output devices, software consists of the three types. So that's all we can do with the, the smart arts. Now let's look at charts. <coughs> so let's look at chart. So what are charts used for? Charts are used to analyze the data. So here we're going to do a bit simple data that have to do with jet population estimates in each county in line here. So we're just going to use four counties. So here we have to click on chart. Now there are different type of chart, but first we're going to start with a pie chart. So we have to click on pie chart, and we have to click on OK. Now when you click on OK, there's a data sheet. So this data sheet we have to fill up. So when you see seal, that's going to be the title on the chart. So here we put in a uh, county population. Uh, population. So here we're going to type county population. Now let's watch it's going to change from here. So here we're going to write out the county's name. So, uh, bomb. We're going to go to Ufa. We're going to go to Lima. We're going to go to Basa. Maldivi. So we have to write the estimated population here. So we just want to analyze it's just an estimated value so let's say bond county have like 80 000 and then let's say we might look for country have like 50 000 let's say new country have like 30 000 and then let's say the last county which is marketing having something around 20 000. see what happened now the chart appears with the full value so we double click then i close the chart the chart sheet. So here is the chart now. Let's try to format it to see the data differently. So we can come here to the start. We can click on this one. Now this one here is showing each color is showing each county here. So one county is the blue color. It's have high high population I we specify in the data sheet. So it's going for the full percent. So looking at the chart, looking at the data we input in the chart, you're going to know exactly which one of the county having higher population. So the chart is just allowing us to get quickly analyze. So we're having 44% here, 17%. So this one is the height, which is low far. So we can change the color of the chart by clicking chart color and you know, hovering over those colors to change it different way. We can also click and format the chart to look different way. You know? So we have different looks, different style here. You know? So we can also edit our data. So the data we input in the chart in case we want to edit it. We have to go back to data sheet. We have to go edit data. Now, whatever changes that we made here in the data sheet. So in case I click here, then I change it to 90,000. Now if I do 90,000 and click enter, you see here, it increases to 
So whenever you edit the data, the chart automatically will update the edited value. Get that? So that was for chart. So let's see another thing. Okay. Now let's look at the uh, links. How we can create links in our document? So what are links? First. Now, if you record a YouTube video, or whenever you see a video, how do you really access that video? It's through the link, right? So we can create links for different documents saved on our computer. That whenever we click that link, as I can be able to go to that access that particular document. So let's create a link for the document I already have saved on my laptop. It could be Excel, it could be PowerPoint, we can even use it on a folder. So here we have to click links and then hyperlink, click on hyperlink. So we're selecting one default document that like I don't even know the location of it. Okay. So I know where it is, but I can create a link for it. So we have to find one document like that. So let's say I want to use a, a document as saying I have a max in Excel sheet. So that's what we can use different of uh, uh, how you call it document type like Excel, PowerPoint, and all. Hmm? So that go for the mark sheet in Excel. Then I click on OK. What happened? Links have been inserted. Now this link can take me to the Excel sheet that I have the marks in. How can I do that? First, we have to first copy the link, but we can just hold down Control and double click the links, and then they click Yes. Now let the link load. See what happened. The links now take us to the Excel mark sheet. See that? It's not even Microsoft Word. It's different kind of things that we're going to. So close it. Now this link, whenever we click on it by holding down control, it will take us to the Excel file. Hmm? That's how we can create links. So you can create link for folder, you can create link for different type of document. Hmm? Now let's look at bookmark. So I have six pages here. Now, I'm editing the document. Let's say there are a lot of document there. There are a lot of uh, text including. So, I ended at a particular point. I completed at a particular point. Okay. So, let's say I stop here. Instead of page 6, let's try to hit part 1. So, okay. Now, there are no text on those pages. It's okay. Now, let's come here. So, I, I stop here. I stop the editing here. So, I want by tomorrow when I come, as soon as I open the document, I should go at this particular point that I, I stop. So, what you have to do is you have to apply the pull mark there. So, you have to select it. We just want to, to know exactly here we stop. So, let's try to apply some change color. So, let's change the color. And then, let's change the style. Apply different style to it. So, here now we want to apply pull mark. So we can click here, we can highlight the text, or we can just click to the beginning. Let's go back to the insert. And then let's go back to things. And then let's see bookmark. So click on the bookmark. Now we have to type the name. So we're going to say D1. So bookmark 1. We want to go to location. We just click add. Bookmark is added. Let's go by the top, first page, control it home. Now I want to go to the bookmark from where I stopped. What I have to do? Just go back here, go back to bookmark. Bookmark one, click go to. What happened? We're right back here. So here is where we stop the editing. So using the bookmark, clicking go to, we come back to where we stop. That is it for bookmark. Now another look at header and footer. So header is here. If I'm sending my document somewhere and I want a text to appear at the top, okay, or if I'm printing, I want a particular text to appear. On all of the pages inside the document, at the top, we go for header. If I want another notes to appear at the bottom, that's the footer, we go for footer. Now let's see how header works. So click on header, now choose the position. So I want this one. Here you have to type the text. So I want uh, a text to appear saying the YouTube channel name. So IT underscore promo, like this. I want this as a header for my document. Now I have to click close header and footer. The header appeared on all of the pages inside the document as we go down. So header of notes appearing 
at the edge of the document. So you lock it onto home over at the top. In case I want to do folder also. So from inside, instead of header, I can do a folder. So folder here, go to folder and then choose also. See what happened now. It becomes a folder. So whatever data that I want to type, I can type it. So maybe I want to type for uh, open line. This text. Click, close header and folder. Now we also have a folder on our document and we also have header. That's how we can apply header and footer. Let's look at page number next. So page number, I want to apply number to my page. Okay. Now, in another upcoming uh, tutorial, we're going to look at how we can apply page number without it affecting the cover page and the maybe table of content that we have. But just watch out for this one. Watch out for that video going to come. And we just want to insert a page number in our document. Now, we can insert page number at the top or at the bottom, or we can choose a particular place to insert it. Now, if I click top of the page, there are three available options. I can do top page left, in the middle, or on the right side. If I click on the left, page number is going to be inserted on the left side at the top of the page. Now, if I click close, now page number is applied. So, all of the pages got page number. But it is appearing at the top left. Mm -hmm. In case I want it there, whenever you insert a page number, you now want it. Go back to page number. Go back to page number and say remove page number. Now page number is not there. In case I want to insert it at the bottom, then I have to go here. Go to the bottom of page, then go here. So bottom of page, I want it in the middle. Click here. Page number is also applied in the middle. If you can hit close header and footer, they are close. So that is it for header, folder, and page number. Now for text box, we're going to use it as time goes back. Now let's look at another available option here. Page. If we refer back to our our outline. Huh, this we're going. So we did smart eye, we did word eye, uh, we did a chart, we did bookmark, header, and folder, page number. Now we own more at the end. So just keep it small. We'll soon be done with it. Now let's look up where I and cap drop. So let's go back here. Now where I options is available here. Okay. So we can use where I, you know, <coughs> to type a text that will bring two different colors, you know, just just formatting the text different way. So if I want to do a word I with a particular text, I can copy the text, I can paste it in the word I. So let's say I'm going to use this text if you provide. So I can highlight this text. I can do Control C. I can click here to copy it. Now I can go for where I from insert. So insert, come here where I, whatever I you want, just click on. It. So in case I want this one, I'll click on it. See what happened. Since I selected, I copy the video. That's why it is a clear with the word I designed that I click on. Now when you insert the word I, you can format it. Okay, you can change the style that you apply. You know. So we can click here, format type with here. We can click on the format. The ID is made out of uh, one color for now, two color, one is in the middle. So we can change two color. So we can click here and click the red color. You can also click here and choose another color. You see what happens? Two colors is applied. So one or is not showing much. So you have to do with the outline. You can increase the weight of the outline. So see the particular color. You know from here now let's see another thing we can do we can change the eye from here maybe we want to apply the shadow so shadow to the text see that depending on the position of the shadow you apply the shadow will be applied on your word eye okay. we combine two colors so now we're using two colors so that is it for word eye you can also just in case you're not having the text you can also just click go by the insert Go back to word I just let the word I design click here. So inside here now you have to type the text. Okay. So whatever text you want to use in the word I just type it there. So maybe I want to use a video. So see what happens. The scene where you can click on it, you can come here, then you can change the color also. You see that? So you can modify the color from here. So that is it for word I. 
Now let's see what else we have on our agenda. So we're having um, how we can insert multiple document in just one. So let's come back here. Let's try to do new control N. Now I gave you examine or you have an assignment to do or you have a particular project where you have different different parts. So like you did part one, you save it, you did part two, you save it, you did part three, you save it. Now how can you bring everything inside one document? So from the insert type, the options is available right here. If you click here, now if you click object, you need to want to bring multiple objects. But I go for text from file. You click this from file. Now let's hit the documents. Now here I want to bring one, two, three, and four. So the order that you select it in, it will come with that order. So this one I want it to come first. I have to select it first. Uh I just wait a minute. Okay, let's go back. Okay. Okay. Now let's go again. So insert. Let's go back to this option. Let's go text from file. Now let's select those text. So I want this. I want this text. I want this. I want this text. So four document, different document I have selected. So this one will come first. This one will come first. This one will come second, third, and fourth. Click on insert. Now what happened? All the document that I selected, everything is inserted here. So based on the order that I selected in it, they all come. So this one, the first one, and the second one. Like that. That's how we can bring, you know, multiple documents into one. Mm -hmm. That was it. Now, what else we have to do? Let's look at equations and symbols. So equations and symbols. Back to insert, and then let's look at equations. So all of the equations that are available in math, they all present inside the application, they are integrated inside the apps. So whenever you want to use one of them, just find it in equations. So now in case we want to use the quadratic formula, you can click here. The equations appear. Now we just have to change the value. So instead of x, x I can say 2. Instead of x, I can write the value of x. Instead of b, I can remove it and write the value of b. And then still on this one also. You know, just click in the right value after the click back. Equation stay right. Mm -hmm. With the symbols also, you can click here. Now, our symbols are all available because I want to write a particular symbol. Maybe our dealing with currency, maybe a euro. Now, I can't, I don't know where to use the use symbols. So I can click here and then click on more symbols. When you click on more symbols, there are category of symbols. So this one is saying currency symbols. So these are all the symbols of currency in the world. So if I want a euro, I just click on it. Click on insert. And I have you. In case I want a dollar, dollar sound, uh, there's so many of them. So we can find the dollar symbols. Or find the dollar symbols. Okay. Now there are other symbols, you know. We just have to terribly find the symbols. Whatever symbols you want, you just click on that symbols. So in case you want to go for it, now we can click on insert. The symbols also inserted. So that is it for Microsoft Word Part 2. There are a lot more of them coming. But something we didn't do in the part one, we didn't save. So now in case I want to save this document. And I also want to save it with a password. Now, how can I do it? I can click here using the quick access to bar, clicking the save option, or using Control X. You press Control X, as I said before, you have to specify where you want to save it. So, this document will save it on the desktop. So, you have to click on browse. Now, we have to click desktop. We have to write our document name. So, it's saying Microsoft Word Part 2. So we can save the document in different format also. In case we want to save it in a PDF, then we can click here, <coughs> then find click on PDF. Document will be saved in PDF. So if we click on OK, copy of this document will be saved in PDF. Now let's see. Copy of been saved in PDF. It directly open in the browser. Okay. 
That's how we can save in PDF. But we want to save the document with a password. So let's go back to it. So it's here. First, we have to apply the password. So we'll go to file. We'll go to info. And then we'll go to e uh, protect document. And we have to go to equip with password. So click on equip with password. Type the password. You have to type password that you can remember. So we type the password. Click OK. Type the password again. Click OK. Password now is applied to the document. Now let's go back to save us. Let's go back to uh, browse. Let's hit our uh, desktop. Now in Microsoft Word Part 2 and click on save. Our document is saved. Let's go back to the desktop and then let's bring the icon back. Let's check. So here's the document. Now if I double click here, see what happens. If I double click here, now it's requesting for password everything. So if I type my password, click OK, document OK. So that was it for Microsoft Word Part 2. And then watch out for the Part 3. We will be dealing with the design type, the layout type. We will be doing milk merge and all coming up. Okay. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So you can get notified for whatever new video that we will be uploading. So thank you for watching. Backs of all. Merry Christmas. Bye bye. See you.